Hello, my name is Ron Martin with the City of Summit Police Department and welcome to this month's session of Off the Cuff. It's great to be back in the studio. Today we have two fine young gentlemen, somewhat new with the City of Summit Police Department, but not the newest. We have Rudy, welcome to the show, buddy. How's it going, Sarge? Great, good to see you, buddy. Lenny, How welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. It's a lot of viewers today getting ready to learn what you two are all about, where you come from, and how you got involved in law enforcement, and uh, all that's planned for you within the next few years here, and many years to follow. So thanks for being on the show and for sharing your testimonies with us today. We appreciate it. Welcome. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's exciting. Audience, what I enjoy most about these two guys here, <laughs> they're real, they're fun, most importantly, they're compassionate. And that's one of the most important traits as law enforcement officers is for a law enforcement officer to, to be compassionate. They're, they're compassionate. They're, when it's time to be serious, these guys are serious, game on, they're out there, and they are focused, ready to take care of business and to serve each and every one of you and your families. When it's time to laugh, have fun, and you know, take the tie off, relax a little bit, these are your guys. They keep it real. Uh, they keep each and every one of us uh, you safe along with the rest of us and I'm looking forward to uh, you meeting them and learning more about them today. So with that said, I'm going to start off with you Rudy. Great. Welcome buddy. Thank you. Okay. So tell us, where, where did you grow up, go to school and get involved? How old were you when, when you started getting interested in a law enforcement career? Sure. Well, I was born and raised in Summit. I uh, grew up in town. I went through the Summit, uh, Summit Public School System. I went through Lincoln Hubbard, graduated from Lawn C. Johnson Middle School, mm -hmm. and I graduated from Summit High School in 2009. And uh, law enforcement is uh, something I've always been interested in and something, a dream that I wanted to accomplish. And uh, to be able to do it in my hometown, it's, it's incredible. So you hit a grand slam home run. Absolutely. Good for you. How long have you been with us now? Uh, as a full-time officer, one year and a half. I graduated the academy in December of uh, 2016. Right. And uh, prior to that, I was a auxiliary officer for two years, approximately two years. And uh, I think that was in 2014. Tell our viewers, what's an auxiliary officer? Some, some people do not know what an auxiliary officer is. Can you tell us? Absolutely. Basically, what we do is uh, the auxiliary force, they're a group of volunteers. We do ride-alongs with the full-time officers. And we come out to these special events such as Fourth of July, the Memorial Day Parade, mm -hmm. and uh, many of them maybe have a f maybe want to go into a law enforcement career, mm -hmm. and other ones maybe they just do it to give back to the community. Very nice. So, how old were you when you started doing the auxiliary? When I started the auxiliary, I was 23 years old, I believe. So that's great because you you use that respectfully as a platform to launch you into a full-time sworn official. Absolutely. With the city of Salt, Absolutely. I went through the Auxiliary Academy while I was still in college. Where did you go to college? I went to Fairleigh Dickinson University in Teaneck. You went there your whole four years? All four years, yes, sir. No kidding. Good. Yep. Did you live out there, commute? What did no, you I commuted. I commuted all the way to Teaneck. And then how did you end up getting hired in Summit? What, what, what happened with that? For me, truthfully, it was Summit I thought was out of my reach. But uh, the opportunity came up where they were taking applications for people who were already certified. Right. As a police officer, I wasn't certified yet. And they opened it up to auxiliary officers. So I applied, you know, I threw, threw everything into it. Uh, they called me in for an interview and uh, luckily I think I did pretty well. And uh, You did very well here. You're, here. Yep. you're doing great. And you're continuing to do very well. Thank you. Now I believe that was the first time in years, I'm talking many, many years, um, that the city, that Chief Weck, um, went through and we um, did a test and brought police officers who are auxil former auxiliary officers on board. That's correct. Because I was an auxiliary police officer 26 years, 27 years ago, and I got hired. And I also, that was a platform for myself to go through. And obviously you'll be sitting here 26, 27 years <laughs> later. If I'm lucky enough. Uh, yes. You know, and I, 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 absolutely. And what a phenomenal career I've, I've had. And now I get to share it with uh, each and every one of you guys. And I mean, how old were you in 1992? I was a year, a year old. You were a year old. Yep. And I was here. <laughs> See that? Yep. And it seems like that. And you'll be sharing that with somebody, with a young officer one day, even though, and we even relatively look 
the same age. Right. We don't look all that much different, That's wouldn't true. you say? Absolutely. Absolutely. See, I like the way you think. <laughs> you're being honest, right? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> very good. Very good. So now that you're here, what what are your responsibilities? What division are you in? What's your what shift do you work? Well, I'm in the patrol division right now. I am. Um, I work the day shift. Right. So we go to calls, emergencies, not emergencies. Uh, we do everyday activities are pulling over cars, mm -hmm. patrol, uh, traffic enforcement. We go to the schools and... Uh, you go to the schools, why do you go to the schools? We do walkthroughs, we like to make sure that the kids know that they're okay mm -hmm. and uh, just make sure that everything's safe. It's, it's great, we get to meet a lot of the kids, a lot of the teachers. That way if any sort of emergency, God forbid, ever does happen, mm -hmm. we're familiar with the school, we're familiar with the kids, where everything is, where the cafeteria is, where yeah. the gym is, and uh, it familiarizes us with the school. So when you get a call there and you're responding that you know a child fell in the gym, there's an injury, you know exactly where to go. You don't have to go to the office, ask where the gym is. Nope. Anything goes down, you know exactly where you're going. These school walkthroughs are outstanding. And you're building a rapport with the administrative staff, the teachers, the students. Yep. That's fantastic. Yep. Absolutely. And that is daily, every day you're doing Every day that. we do. Everybody in patrol is doing that every day. Yep through all the schools. And they will let us know if we don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing too. Yep, absolutely. absolutely. Well, it's great, great having you. It's Thank really you. great having you. Thank you, Sarge. Lenny, talk to us. What's your story, buddy? Where did you grow up and when did you get interested in law enforcement? Where did you go to school? Talk to us. So I grew up in Berkeley Heights uh -huh. my whole life. Um, went to Governor Livingston High School, went to Union County College. And my law enforcement Career started at Berkeley Heights Police Department. Actually, I was a dispatcher there. That's started, you started dispatching. Yep, March of 2013. I started uh, as a dispatcher there, part time. Yeah. Went full time in uh, the fall of that year. Put in my time, and then uh, when there was an opening over here at our Joint Dispatch Center, I transferred over there for a few months. I got involved with the auxiliary program, like Rudy. That's how we met. You were on first. Rudy has about a year One on. One year. Yep. Right. So um, did the auxiliary program. Mm -hmm. Fell in love with it made me want this more, more than ever. Right. Yep, absolutely. And um, like Rudy said, when they put out the applications for the hiring process, I put in my application, I was an auxiliary. Guess it worked out. Was it stressful? Very. Very. <laughs> Anybody who says anything different is a lie. And oh, absolutely. Right. I remember the day, I remember uh, everything, prepping for it, and uh, I, yep. it was very exciting. It's something I'll never forget, but hey. And it you want out. it for all the right reasons. Absolutely. And it's, it's a difficult um, career to pursue. It's a lot of work. There's yeah. a lot involved. Yeah, absolutely. Between the testing system, preparing for the test, mm -hmm. preparing for the physical and ag agility test, going on your interviews, yep. and then getting accepted, and then getting through the academy. It's a lot of hard work. And that's right. one of the things, actually during my interview, that's one of the things I told, um, I told the chief. I said, my whole life has been about this. This is what I want to do, and I, I hope I can condense it into a 25 minute interview right, 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 to let you see that I'm ready for this. So yeah, very stressful, but it worked out. Now, did the two of you guys, you obviously went through the academy together. Yeah. Did, yep. Who, how many guys went through with the two of you? Were you the only two from Summit? We were the only two from Summit. Our class had, I think, 75 when we started. We lost a few for uh, PT and stuff like that. And uh, on the first day of the academy, actually, me and Rudy we followed each other, we parked next to each other, and we had a good plan. We said, whatever happens, let's try to just stick next to each other. Right, right, right. Well, that lasted about 30 <laughs> seconds after the drill instructors came out, and oh, yeah? all chaos ensued, so. What yeah, kind of chaos, what happened? Just a lot of screaming, and push-ups, <laughs> and yelling, and running back and forth to the car, so I, I didn't see Rudy from about 6.30 in the morning until about 12.30 uh, when we broke for the day. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yep. That's not what time you got out of the academy, though. The first day is uh, it's a half day. Oh, the just an orientation day. thing. Yeah. Gotcha. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So tell me. So you go through the academy. You come here to patrol. Mm -hmm. Did you two swear in together the first night? Did you two swear in as well together? We got we sworn did. in the day before the academy started. You guys got sworn in the day before July the academy. July 15th. What are your responsibilities with us? What division are you in? So I'm a patrolman, too, like mm -hmm. Rudy. Right. Um, answering calls, proactive enforcement motor vehicle stops, crime prevention. Mm -hmm. You know, stopping cars is not only enforcing traffic violations, but at the same time, what I think a lot of people don't realize is it, it prevents crime, it deters crime, because somebody might come into Summit with the intention to do something bad and see that there's a, 
there's a lot of policemen out today stopping cars. Maybe I should maybe I should just get out of here. So it's not only just stopping cars for violations, but it's also crime prevention, walking through the schools, interacting with the community. We worked together for a year. Best year of my life. <laughs> oh, so that's what I want to hear. Best year of your life. Doesn't get any better. No. But you'll you'll be all right. Don't you worry. Yeah. It, it, it was great. Over the top. Had, had a lot of fun. Absolutely. And um, let me ask you this. Five years from now, you, you, you guys are both new. Mm -hmm. Five years from now, ten years from now, we all come in here. And I don't think that there's any police officer that does not get hired and say, you know what? I want the top seat one day. I, I, I strive to be the chief of police. You, you, you think that. But let's not go that far along. But let's go to five years out. 10 years out, what are, what are some of your goals professionally for, for yourself, Rudy? I would love to uh, move up the ranks, maybe be, one day become sergeant, mm -hmm. possibly lieutenant, you know, if I'm lucky enough. Mm -hmm. um, wherever life takes me, I'm, I'm excited. There's many different options that we can do. I mean, there's a detective division, there's, right. a, there's traffic. Uh, we can be lent out to the narcotics strike force. Right. There, there's a bunch of different stuff that we can do. Get involved in all of it. Absolutely, I'm excited. I, I, you know, it's wherever life takes me, I'll take it day by day and I'm, and I'm excited. Good. How about yourself? Can't copy. Rudy's answer. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I know you don't want to. Right. But what about yourself? Five years out, ten years out, where does Officer Lenny Francino professionally see, see his career? You know, it's probably something that every new guy would say, every young guy on the force. Mm -hmm. I, I love being on patrol. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy where I am right mm -hmm. now. But at the same time, there's so many opportunities here that I'm just glad to know that, you know, I'm like you said, I'm going to take as many as... I can that come my way. Mm -hmm. I'd love to get involved with Dare. I like you, that you're tailor made for that. I really love I, I love kids. You I love really kids. do. You do great in the classroom. Um, I like. Uh, I, I would love to get into bike patrol. That's one thing I've always been interested in. Right. Riding the bike through town. Right. Mm -hmm. the weather's nice. Interacting with the people, with the public. Wherever, wherever it takes me. I'm open minded to to anything. That's great. And you guys both have that personality. Mm -hmm. The night I got promoted to sergeant, I had 15 years on the job, and of course, my family and friends come. But friends that I'd met while I was on patrol, I couldn't tell you, it was probably 85 to 90 percent of the people who came to support me mm -hmm. that evening. People I met just while driving up maybe the uh, Druid Hill area, yeah. or, or a <clears throat> anywhere up that area too. Somebody's raking their leaves, blowing their leaves, or washing the car, get out. Talk to them. Absolutely. And make, build relationships with. I cannot tell you how many people. Just patrol is the best place, whether you're walking uptown, driving around, the kids are selling lemonade, mm -hmm. playing frisbee uh, on the lawn, or working in the yard. Just to sit, stop, have a conversation. And I know that's exactly what you guys like to do. Yeah. You're people. You're, you, you, you love people. And so continue doing what you're doing because I watch both of you, I, I, I listen to what you're saying. And I see the relationships that you guys are fostering already so early on in your careers. It's exciting. It's uh, it's definitely not something that I would see if I didn't become a police officer. There's probably people that I would never have met, and I, it's great. You know, even on a random day such as today, driving down, you know, you might wave at Mr. Smith, Mr. McGuire, and they'll they'll never. I would have never had a chance to meet them if I weren't a police officer. Whether it was a good interaction or a bad interaction, a bad situation maybe they went through. They'll always remember us, you know. And that's, that you were and able to what you, sh you you showed compassion, exactly, yep. genuine concern. You helped them, yep. and a, a, a lot of times those relationships are e everlasting. It, 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 it's great. There's no doubt about it. It's one of the things that I enjoy most about working in a community such as Summit. The relationships that I have fostered with other people, the absolute best of the best. Yep. As you guys know, I'm a people person myself, and that's the best part of this job. The very best part of it. Let me ask you this, talking about relationships. <laughs> heard this guy, heard your buddy fell in love. Yes, he did. Oh, man. <laughs> Tell us, Rudy, what's going on? Yeah, it's exciting times in my life. Uh, I'm getting married this August. Uh, getting married to high school, my high school sweetheart. We're actually uh, going to get down to Costa Rica, where our family is from, Right. to get married. You and your bride-to-be are both families are from Costa Rica? Yep, both of our, uh, nice. we were both born here. And, uh, but both of our families, we're both first generation Americans, and uh, we want to go and spend it with our family that are down there. So our family, 
a lot of our family down here, I mean, that live up here, are traveling down there for for the event, and uh, it's exciting times. A lot of planning, but uh, exciting for it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And uh, also, I heard some very some more good news. <laughs> well, you uh, working in Summit, living in Summit, and you're staying in Summit. Staying in Summit, yep. Just purchased a new home? I did. Good for you guys. So you're doing yep. some work on it, getting it all ready? Absolutely. When's the wedding? What month are you get married? August. August. Think you'll have everything squared away to the way you want, want it by that time? No pressure. I'm hoping. It's a lot of work, but I think, I think we'll be able to do it. You helping them? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> all, my, all my free time. <laughs> I hear that, man. Best of friends. Speaking of best of friends, I heard some other good news. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What's the deal? So, uh, so me and Rudy have known each other a long time, almost three years now. We've been through a lot together. So uh, In three years, that's right. Yeah, from dispatching, auxiliary to the academy, and uh, Rudy asked me to be his best man for his wedding. So I'm going down for the wedding, and I'm in charge of all the uh, shenanigans to come along with it. <laughs> shenanigans? What do you mean shenanigans? Uh, bachelor party, all that stuff. All, the, all the best man responsibilities. <laughs> oh, you're, so you're throwing a bachelor party for this guy? Yeah. Where are you having it? Over at the hat? Yeah, we're just going to lay low. Hat tavern. Hat tavern, is that right? <laughs> yeah. That's where you guys are going? Hang out for a little bit, yeah. That's... I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe it. No, seriously, what are you guys doing? So I organized it with all of uh, all of our friends, a couple of Rudy's friends. Uh, we actually surprised Rudy, and we're doing an all-inclusive trip to Cancun for a few days in April. Are you serious? Yeah. Who, you you thought of that? I thought of it and organized. You picked the whole... right guy, bro. Yeah, I know, right? You, no kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Yep. How many of you guys are going? It's, uh, Eleven of us. How cool is that? So why'd you tell him? Well, I, I told him after it was all planned, all said and done and booked. Yeah, I had, I had no idea. he had idea. to take off the time and all that. But while yeah. it was being booked, he had no idea. So I'm the one that's... Man, you're that. a heck of a guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fantastic. They don't make him like me. No, when <laughs> absolutely not. So let me ask you this. What month are you guys going out to Cancun? April. Yeah. Really nice, relaxing good. few days. All right. Well, we're looking forward to hearing... Hearing all about it when you get back. Yep. <laughs> all right. We won't go on off the cuff with it, you know. What happens in Cancun stays in Cancun. Yeah, but enjoy yourselves, guys. <laughs> enjoy yourselves. I'm sure you'll have a great time. Mm -hmm. Now, we have some other cool events coming up. Get married, Rudy. Yep. Purchase a new home. Got to get you a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in, due, I, in due time. No, you're not. But we got some good things coming on. We're going on a police unity tour. Yep. It's my yep. second time going. Your guys' first time going. First time. Some guys are making a comeback going, uh, going again. I know Chief Weck, it's going to be his second time. Uh, the first time I went was the first time uh, Chief, went, uh, Chief Weck went as well. So we're looking forward to making a comeback. And we're looking forward to you guys coming with us. How many do we have all together from Summit going on this tour? I think 12. 12. That might be including support staff and all that. I think 11 riders, if I'm not mistaken. All right. I said we have to look forward to the Police Unity Tour. Some people do not even know what I'm talking about. They don't, don't. So I'm going to ask you guys, who wants to take the lead on this one? What is the Police Unity Tour? We're going to do a show in the near future, everybody, to talk more about the Police Unity Tour. However, we're going to give you a brief synopsis right now of what it's all about. So briefly, take the ball, run with it, Rudy. Tell us, tell, tell our viewers what the Police Unity Tour is. Sure. Well, the Police Unity Tour is a, um, it's an event that's organized every year. Uh, police officers from around the country travel, and we ride our bicycles from our group. We'll be riding from, I believe we leave from Florham Park. I believe so. From uh, the Jets training facility, and we actually ride a bicycle down all the way down to the police memorial, National Police Memorial in Washington, D.C. And uh, we do it for four days straight. We stop at night, sleep somewhere, and we, as soon as the dawn hits, we, we hit the road again. Now, at the wall. While you're riding, you're wearing a bracelet yep. for a fallen officer. Are you wearing a bracelet for a fallen officer this mm -hmm. year? Okay. Yes, I am. And um, do you know who you're riding for yet? Uh, Detective Tarantino from Summit. You're riding for one of our own, mm -hmm. Detective Matthew Tarantino. Yep, his name's going on the wall, so I thought it'd be, thought it'd be appropriate. Very nice. That's outstanding. Yeah. How do you feel about this year's tour? It's your first one. First one. How are you feeling, buddy? I'm excited. Good. I'm really excited. I'm excited to be going with you guys. It's going to, be, it's going to be, a, be a whole lot of fun. Yep. What are you guys expecting from, from, from this tour, from what you've heard about it and what, what you've seen about it? I, I know what to expect. It, it is probably one of the highlights of my career, mm -hmm. and I believe anybody that has done it. Uh, Lieutenant Rabaska, I believe he's been participating in the Police Unity Tour for maybe, I'm going to take a good 
good honest guess here around 15 years wow. I mean 15 times and yeah, maybe even more I, I could be low on, low on that number and you guys may be doing it year after year after year it is a moving event it is, it is heart-wrenching it's, it's it's a beautiful event and um, it's something that I think everybody if they have an opportunity to get involved with to get involved with you are a blessing to those families those families are a blessing to us and um, you're sharing your heart with them you're sharing your lives with them your support for them and you're listening to them when you get down there and, and, and they, they are just so grateful that for for what everybody does to show to show love on them and um, are you riding for one or, or two I'm riding for Matt Tarantino mm -hmm. and I'm also riding for a policeman that was shot in the line of duty in Pennsylvania a few years ago uh, Byron Dixon if you remember How'd you that across his name I remember when it happened, and I, it just, it was all over the news, and it was something that really just hit me home. You know, he was ambushed on the front steps of headquarters, just leaving work, just a normal guy like me and, like me and you, and um, there was a manhunt for two months to find the guy. I don't know if you remember. He, I uh, do remember. In the woods of Pennsylvania. Yeah. So, um, he's always just stuck close to my heart. When I was in the police academy, I made a shirt for him. We had a workout where we pick a fallen officer and dedicate the workout to him, so I made a shirt for him. So I figured, uh, I'm going to make the, the uh, wristband for him. Do the ride for him and uh, for Matt Tarantino. That is fantastic. You know, you know, it's great. You reach out to the family. Yeah. Have, have you done that yet? Reach I out have, yeah, through Facebook and social media and stuff like that. And I'm not sure if his wife's going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, if not, I'll mail her the bracelet that I wore with his name on it. Bracelet, the shirt, whatever you have. Whatever I have, yeah. That is really, really great. That is good news. Rudy, let me ask you this. We're talking about what we're going to be doing within five years. 10 years, it's for you also, Lenny. 10 years out. What have you enjoyed, then it's gonna be your turn, so far, what has been the highlight of your career or a call that you went on that, that has um, that made an impact on you? Well, I, I don't know if I could pick one single call, but just realizing what it is to be a law enforcement officer, the different things that we do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Every day is different. Um, growing up in Summit, you don't, I never really found out what it is. I would see police officers all the time, right? but I never knew what it was like to be a police officer. So now as a police officer, it's, it's just incredible the stuff that uh, we do, we do do on a daily basis that the public doesn't find out about. You know, we, we go and uh, we help Either it's either save, li save, save lives or just the regular traffic patrol, stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's, it's just You never know incredible. what one day has in store. Absolutely. Every day is different. And uh, I can tell you when I put on my uniform every day, I can't, I can't expect anything to happen that day because I can't, you just can't. Every day is different. That's exactly right. Yep. What about yourself, Lenny? Has there been any one particular incident and I understand exactly where you're coming from, Rudy, mm -hmm. where, where sometimes you just can't think of one particular incident that may, made a very positive impact on your life or, or something that made you look at life differently. But um, how about you? For me, it's the little things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's when you stop and see somebody with the hood open in their car and they mm -hmm. broke down and mm -hmm. it's 30 degrees outside. And yeah. Something as small as just helping push the car off to the side of the road and giving them a lift into town so they can stay warm for a little bit. I mean, it's just the little things like that that you know you made an impact, you know you really helped somebody. Yep. Things like that stick with you. And like we were talking about before, people bump into me in town and go, how you been? You, you helped me last year with this and with that. And, and yeah. that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Making a difference. People going home saying, you know what? They, they, they appreciate what you've done to help them and uh, make their day, to make their life. A little bit easier mm -hmm. or a whole lot easier. And when you say the little things in life, you know, to us that seems like a little thing. But, but to them, I'm sure it, it, it's a big thing. And it takes a special man, a special woman to, to do what you do, to do what we do. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys continue, see continued growth in, in, in your professional lives and in, in your personal lives as you're just starting out in your careers and getting married and in your home and in, in yourself, Lenny. I mean, you guys got a lot to look forward to. And I haven't had the opportunity to work with you uh, 
as closely, unfortunately, but I'm sure we will in the future. I'm not going anywhere. I'm, st oh, yeah. I'm staying around a while. I'm lucky enough. I hope Absolutely. I do. All right. <laughs> I hope I can be. Yeah, I'm lucky this guy even more. <laughs> huh? But I got to tell you, working with you and me getting to know you personally, Lenny, mm -hmm. I remember when you first came here and you walked into the lineup room. I said, look at this guy. I said, he's got such a great personality. He's extremely personable and just a fun guy. And what I, what I learned about you as the days, the weeks, and the months, and the year went on is like I shared earlier in the show, you knew when to turn it on and when to pump the brakes and bring it down just a little mm -hmm. bit. You had a healthy balance of when it's time to laugh and have fun, it's time to laugh and have fun. When it's time to go to work and turn it on and be 100% serious and focused and dead on, you were 100% focused and dead on. Mm -hmm. And you were 100% involved and you, you cared about the outcome of what was happening. Mm -hmm. And you ask questions all the time. There's a lot of young guys, a lot of young men and women that, that come on the job and they don't ask as many questions and they think they have the answers. And what I recognize in the two of you and especially you because I got to work with you, what I really like about uh, the most was your humility. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that and I respect that about you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, sir. And I'm looking forward to you and I working more closely together and, and all that you do. And I hear a lot of great things about you, and I'm looking forward to seeing them uh, myself as well. The more closer Sarge. you and I can work together. Absolutely. Rudy. <laughs> Sarge. Thanks for coming on the show. Absolutely. Lenny, thanks for coming. Thank you. You guys are wonderful. I'm looking forward to working with you for many more years. Everybody, we want to thank you once again for tuning in to this month's session of Off the Cuff. You have a great rest of the uh, day. God bless you, and we'll talk real soon. Bye-bye now.